Well, hello, farming friends, and welcome back to another edition of Farming Simulator 2015 with me, your old buddy, Mr. Moose. Hey, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. Instead of some gameplay, uh, we're going to do a little uh, tutorial, a little tech feature uh, on how to set up dual joysticks in Farm Sim. Uh, some of you guys uh, may be wondering how you do it. Um, there, I looked around, there aren't really any videos out there that show, uh, how to do it. So I thought I'd just walk you through the process. Uh, this is going to be pretty basic. I'm going to cover, um, I'm going to assume that you can get your joysticks working on your computer and then we'll go from there as how to set them up to interact with in farm sim. So, uh, the basics, you need two joysticks for this and, um, and go ahead and have them set up and operating. And then we'll go from the rest of the way. Um, yeah. I mean, like I said, it's going to be a pretty basic deal. Um, the biggest thing is, is the terminology within the configuration screens on what functions this actually does. It's not really worded uh, in a way where you'll recognize it right off the bat. So now that I've done it and I understand it, I thought I would go ahead and do a video show you what you what lines you need to add, you know bind to and clarify what they're actually what it what function it does not what they're saying so all right let's get started i'm going to jump to my desktop and we'll go through a couple of things and get started with it. all right guys and gals here we are on my desktop a couple of things i want to point out to you the first thing is before you even start with this make sure you go into your game uh save folder and make a copy of your input bindings file. What am I talking about, right? If you go into my documents, come down to my games, and you go into Farm Simulator, you're going to see a file called Input Bindings. That is where all of your key bindings are stored for the game. So if you're on a game pad or you've got some settings that you really like right now, before you attempt this, go ahead and make a copy of this and put it somewhere in a little safe folder. And that way you've got it. And if you mess anything up with this, you can always go right back to those settings and you'll be happy and it won't mess you up at all. Um, you know, I actually have made uh, several copies of this already. Uh, as you'll see over here on the left hand side, I've got one which is forestry bindings with track IR. I've got one that's just my game pad. Uh, binding. So when I'm doing my ag stuff, I'm not going to be using joysticks. And then I've got just a safe joysticks one uh, where I was messing around and didn't have track IR in or anything else like that. So uh, work in progress on my side of it. And I tweak things a little bit. I might have one of them where I drive with a with a hat switch on top of my joystick, or I may have it where I drive with the joystick and a modifying switch. So um, it's just you know, I mess around with it, I find a I find a setup, play with it, and then I save that, and then I'll go back and tweak it, and eventually I'll find something I really, really like. So, all right. Next thing, got to make sure that our joysticks are properly configured before we even start this process. So to do that, I'm going to assume that you have your two joysticks, you've got them plugged in, uh, your computer is recognizing them. And once that process is going, we want to come down to our start menu. I'm on Windows 7 for this. Uh, it might be different for Windows 8. But you're going to go to Devices and Printers. And you should see your two joysticks listed up here under Devices. Uh, if you don't, you need to mess around with your computer a little bit and make sure that you have them both up here. Uh, if you do, go ahead and right-click on one of them and go to Game Control Settings. And just bring up a window that shows all your different controllers. Uh, you'll see I have my uh, Xbox 360 controller, which is actually a PS3. Uh, I've got my two joysticks, and then I've got my PP Joy virtual joystick, which is what uh, Track IR is using to uh, control the movement when I'm in a vehicle. So what I want to do here is I want to make sure that my joysticks are have a full range of motion on them, and that they're all set to the proper dead zone. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go into the properties for each of them. And I'm on, I, I get a little settings menu here. And what do I mean by dead zone? That's where your switch is sitted, so it's not actually sending a signal out. Uh, it's where it's, it's null, it's not doing anything. Well, you'll see on this particular joystick, right now my throttle's wide open. 
it's got it pegged all the way off and it should be dead center right here and non-responsive um, you need to make sure that happens because if you've got a switch let's say your joystick's tilted a little bit forward to where it's registering moving forward or the handles cocked a little bit you'll see over here in handle twist uh, right here you'll see that moving around that's because my handles twist a little bit if any one of these my hat switch on the top moving around all of that if any one of those is moving or registering is moving it's gonna mess you up in the config settings because basically how the config works is you click on it once and it tells you click on the you know the button or whatever you're gonna to use to do this function well when you click on it and you erase it out if this is registering forward it's automatically going to go oh well we want it to be the throttle and it's going to mess you up and you're not going to be able to get your settings right so you want to make sure everything is centered and nothing is showing as a registration real quick this is the key this is the uh, unit that I'm going to be configuring and I'll go ahead and show you a few things that I'm going to do with this um, I'm going to have two of them set up on my right joystick this will be the control the right joystick will control uh, my boom arm and it's going to record it's also going to um, control pushing the extension of the boom out on like the Ponzi and on the Buffalo uh, I'm going to use these two bottom switches right here to control opening the claw on the Buffalo so this switch right here on the right bottom will be to uh, open my claw all the way up and this one will be to close it down here on the bottom left up here on the top right I'm going to use that to turn on my head for my Scorpion King and um, the hat switch up here I'm going to actually use to drive with and the rest of the buttons I'm using for other stuff that well we don't really need to talk about um, when I'm on the left hand side my left hand controls are going to be uh, the bottom button here is going to be controlling panning, uh, tilting, panning, uh, the control head on the Scorpion or on the Buffalo, it's going to pan it either to the right, and this one over here is going to pan it back to the left. So if you think about that, you, you, can spin the, you can spin the claw around, and that's what these two buttons will be for. Uh, the top button here on the right is going to be to, to assign my cut length, and then the one over here on the left is going to be to change my view in the... Uh, when I'm in the vehicle so I can cycle through the different views uh, in the Buffalo things like that and then uh, I'll use another button probably this one right here to change uh, my driver in the Buffalo from forward to backwards and I'm going to show you how to do all that I just want to walk through it so you guys could see kind of have a visual idea of what I'm going to do the trigger on this on the left hand side is going to be my cut and the trigger on my right is going to be a modifier uh, for me to use the joystick for an extra function and I'll explain that to you as we get into it but now that I know both of my joysticks are centered and look right that is the let's see I need to go do the other one real quick so this is my right joystick my throttles off just a little bit so I need to center it and everything else has a good full range of motion so all right we're good to go then all my buttons work yeah so I'm good to go all right so now that I have verified that I know both of my joysticks are responding they're working good now it's time for the fun part we're gonna jump into the game and we're going to configure these guys all right guys and gals we are in the game and once you get to your menu you're going to look for options click on the options button and that's going to take us into this nice little screen where we come down to control and that brings up the key bindings for the entire game and yours is going to look a little bit different than mine mine's going to look a little bit different than yours it all depends on what mods you have in the game and what key bindings they have for instance if you don't have drive control installed you're not going to see this DC gear limit analog up because the DC has to do with drive control but if we start down here at the bottom we start mousing up a little bit you're gonna look over here on the left and you're gonna look for the words front loader 
you're going to see things like open front loader tool, contract front loader arm, extend front loader arm, lower front loader arm, lift front loader arm. And this is what we are looking for to get started. We're looking for lift front loader arm. And that is the function that actually lifts your bucket up or lifts your boom up or whatever. Um, so this is where we're going to start and we're going to assign a value to that over here where it says gamepad. Now you don't want to mess with your key, key to or mouse. You want to leave those the way they are uh, because those are your, you know, stuff that you're used to just play a mouse and keyboard. Gamepad is what we're interested in. This is where we're going to put our joystick values in. Now, let me go ahead and say this to you. If at any time you get a little confused at what something does, the wording on this is not exactly spot on like you, you would think it is. Uh, like lift front loader arm is kind of obvious, but extend front loader arm isn't. Um, you might think extend means push the boom out a little bit. You know, the extension that allows it to telescope out. That's not actually what that is. So um, if you ever get confused at what something really means, come over here to the mouse. And you'll see what your mouse settings are. The first word is your modifier. And what do I mean by modifier? I mean, what button do I click and hold down to then allow the next action of my mouse to do something? So if you were raising your arm on a front loader, you click your left mouse button and then you move up and down with your mouse. And that is raising and lowering it. Whereas to move it left to right or to move something left to right, you move your mouse left and right. That's called your X axis. Up and down is your Y axis. And in this case, like if we were going to curl the bucket on our front loader, we would hold our left button down and then we would move to the left to dump it, move it to the right to curl it up. I think that's right. Maybe it's opposite. But um, just again, remember that as you look at things here, you'll be able to figure out what they were by what the modifiers are and what the action is over on this and if you think about what it is in the game and how you play the game you shouldn't have any problems with this assuming that most of y'all have played more than a couple of days and have gotten used to the mouse control all right so let's get started we're going to begin with lift loader arm uh, because that's the basic feature that you begin with and for me i'm going to have that on my right joystick and so I'm going to say lift loader arm. I'm going to click once here. Everything's going to go gray. You'll see it says trigger axis or button for the action of lift lo loader arm. And so that just means do it. So I'm going to pull back on the joystick, then let go. And it registers axis five. You'll also see down here in the bottom, it will say lift front loader arm was remapped to LSY bracket three. Now, the bracket three number here what is that that tells me which joystick it went to depending on how many game controllers you have mapped to your game at a time for instance i've got four mapped to my game right now i've got my two joysticks my game pad and then my virtual joystick that's controlling track ir so if i do a function on my right joystick it's going to be bracket three if i do a on my uh, left joystick it's going to come up as bracket two if I did something with my game pad it would come up bracket one and if I did something lord forbid with the virtual joystick it would come up bracket four um, so yours is going to be a little bit different based upon how many items you have if you only have two joysticks attached you're going to only have bracket one bracket two uh, if you've got two joysticks and a g27 you're going to have you know bracket two, three, four, five, uh, because of all the controls that are involved with a G27. So it, it just depends on, again, this number is based upon which controller you're using and how many of them you have. Okay. So if your numbers don't match mine, don't get all bugged out about it. Okay. All right. So we've got our front loader arm assigned. The next thing we need to do is lower front loader tool. Now, if we were setting this up, for a front end loader uh, this would be the function that curls the bucket but we're setting this up for forestry and in forestry this command is used to actually pivot your cab 
or to pivot your arm. So like if you're in the buffalo and you raise the boom up and you need the boom to go to the left or to the right, that's what this function is going to do. So again, if you're setting up for a front end loader, this curls your bucket, but for what we're doing for forestry, it's going to actually be our pivot left and right. So uh, you're going to pick out where you want to do that. Do you want to do that on your right or left joystick? For me, I'm going to assign that value to my left joystick. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to left click there and I am just going to shift my joystick over to the side and it's going to do axis one. And again, that's going to show LSX two. So it's LS X axis on the second joystick. Okay. Next is extend front loader arm. Now, Again, this is a little misleading. Extend to me means push out, you know, and then contract means push back in. Um, so you might think that's that telescoping function of your boom. It's not, though, because if we come over here to the mouse and we look, it's the right mouse button and the Y axis, which is up and down. And if we think about that in our gameplay, what does that do? That is the lower part of the boom. Um, that's the part of the boom that actually attaches to the cutting head or to the grapple. That's the lower part that, you know, pushes out or pushes back towards the cab and gives you that extra little bit of functionality on your boom arm. So extend loader arm and contract loader arm is our boom function. And for me, that's going to be on my left joystick. And that's going to be just pushing forward. Uh, for it to come back towards me and pulling back to make it go away from me. You really can't do anything to change that because of the way it's set up in the game other than invert Y axis thing and you don't want to do that. So just you're going to have to deal with it how it is in the game. Uh, if you're used to run in a particular type of machinery and uh, you know where pushing actually pushes the arm away from you and pulling pulls it back to you you're not going to be able to get that to work this way. It just, it doesn't happen. It confuses me all the time because I think pull back will pull the head towards me and it, it actually pushes it away from me. So I'm like, I get a little confused with that, but it's just the way the game is and you have to deal with the way the game is. All right. So open confront loader tool. What does that do? It sounds like it opens up a grapple, right? Wrong. This is the telescoping feature of our um, of our boom. This is what's going to actually push that uh, head out further to reach out and grab those logs way away from you, or to get it a tree that's a little bit further away from you than you than you initially thought. And again, you know that because it is right modifier and the X axis. And if you remember, if you hold down your right button and you push forward, it pushes it out, pull it back, it pulls it in towards. You. So we're going to do that. Now for me, I'm going to put that on my right controller and I'm going to use a modifying button so that I can use the joystick to actually do that function. So my modifier is going to be my right trigger and then I'm going to push my joystick forward. So I'll hold down my right trigger, push my joystick forward, release, and that recorded it for me. And you'll see it says axis five, which we used axis five up here before. But we're using axis 5 plus 1, which is axis 5 plus the first button on the joystick. So that key combination or that button combination allows it to do a different function than it would up here with lifting the loader arm. I hope that makes sense to you. If you understand modifiers and, uh, you know, just think of it the same way as your mouse. If I hold my left mouse button down and I push forward backwards... I get a completely different function if I hold my right mouse button down and push forward and backwards. Uh, so that gives you the ability to do a whole lot more different commands with your joysticks other than just forward, backwards, left and right. Okay. Um, next, lift tool, axis three, lower tool, axis three. What is this? Doesn't make any sense, does it? What this is, is not have anything to do with lifting. This is pivoting. This is on your grapple or on your cutting head, how you can make it twist and spin to the left or to the right. Uh, that is what this modifier is going to be. And that is our lift tool axis three. 
And for me, again, I told you I was going to put that on the lower buttons on my left joystick. So I'm just going to click over here and I'm going to put on the far button, uh, excuse me, closest button to me to rotate to the right. I'm going to click on lift tool axis three. Lower tool axis three is going to rotate to the left and that'll do my rotations. Directly under that, lift tool axis four, lift lower tool axis four. This is your grapple function. This is the claws on the buffalo that come in and out and grab the logs. And so we're going to set those up for us. And we're going to set those up where the left button is going to close the claw and my right button on my right joystick is going to uh, open it up. All right. And that's it. This lift tool axis five, I'm not really sure what that is unless it is a rotation feature uh, for some of these modified scorpions that allows you to rotate the head. Uh, that may be what that is. I'm not real sure. I have to be honest with you. I haven't messed with it yet because I don't have one that has a rotating head in it. Um, but I'm sure I'll end up getting one uh, eventually. All right, so that's the basics to get your functionality in into the forestry equipment. Now, there's a few other things that we're going to want to assign at the same time uh, if we're going to be using our joysticks for just about everything. Now, I'm going to scroll all the way back up to the top of my controls to get up here to the top because we're going to look for a few things like select camera angle. Uh, if I want to have the camera function on my joystick so I can switch through the different views uh, in cab, you know, like on the Ponzi, you got three different views on there. You've got in cab, out of out of vehicle, and then you've also got one right there on the boom. So to cycle through those, I want to put that on my joystick uh, on one of my buttons. So I'm going to assign that to a button here on my joystick and that's taken care of. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to come down here to implement function one, two, three, and four. Uh, if you notice by the letterings here, B, X, O, and Z, these are the ones that turn things on and make things happen in the game. Um, so if you think in the scorpion, B turns on the, uh, the cutting head, X is your cut. O sets the length of the cut, and Z doesn't do anything. So we want to assign these functions to our joystick. So I'm going to assign, again, I told you my right button, uh, my right upper button on my right joystick is going to be my turn on my cutting head. So I'm going to assign that. It puts the number six for joystick three. Then my implement function two, that's my cut head. Now this is very important. Do not, whatever button you use for cut, don't use it for, as a modifier on anything else. I made that mistake the first time I set some things up. And what happens is you cut your tree initially and it gets it and in the, in the scorpion and you're going to move to do something. And if you use that modifier, let's say to control a boom, when you go to pull the trigger in, it, it wants to cut the tree so um, it ends up cutting the tree right where you're at and you get messed up with it so don't use your whatever you assign your value for cut don't use it for anything but cutting all right so i use my left trigger button for that and then the o key that's going to set my cut length i want to be able to modify that uh, with my vehicle so i'm just going to assign that button uh, as well onto one of my joysticks and I've got that assigned now. So uh, I don't really need Z because it doesn't really do a whole lot for us in game. All right, so we can come on down through here and you know, you've got plenty of buttons probably on your joystick. There might be things that you want to do and might, might want to use. Uh, you'll just have to define those for yourself. But some of the really important things that you're going to want to do is come on down here, back down to where we were with the front loader. And if I scroll on down here, we'll get to it real quick. Back where we did the front loader controls, which is right here, just above it is all your drive control and, um, and camera angles. So for me, if I come back up here to walk backward, walk forward, walk right, look. 
look left, down, up, right. That is if you are standing out of the vehicle. Then you get drive backwards, forwards, right, left. Then look down, right, left. That is if you're in a vehicle. Doesn't matter what viewpoint you're using, it's you're in the vehicle. So we're going to map all of these keys real quick because I think it's important that I have the look features. So look down. I'm going to assign that to one of my hat buttons and I'm going to assign it to my left hat button. So look down. I want to look, go forward to look down and I want to go backward to look up and I want to go right for right and left for left. Drive backwards. I'm going to use my other hat button on my right joystick to drive backwards. I'm going to go down forwards. I'm going to go forward right and assign left and then to look around I'm going to use the same commands that I used up here to look around when I'm in a vehicle so I'm going to look down by looking up I'm going to look up by looking down and I'm going to look right and I'm going to look left and that is all assigned pretty good the last thing I want to do I almost forgot is I want to come back up here to the top and I want to look for switch direction, which is change driving direction. I want to assign a, a, uh, a function for that because there's going to be a time when uh, I'm driving the vehicle around and uh, like in the Buffalo, I need to change direction. So I'm just going to assign that uh, to one of my buttons here. And we are good to go. So that's pretty much everything that I needed to save. Now I'm going to show you one last thing before I, I close this out. Remember I told you about making sure your throttle control is set, centered, or make sure everything is in a dead zone because of that? I'm going to purposely move my throttle up just a little bit and make it active. And then I'm going to come right here to turn signal left because it's not going to matter. But my throttle is axis 6 on my, on my controller. I'm going to show you what happens if you've got it off just the littlest bit. You come over here, you left click, and then anything that you try to assign is going to come up axis 6. Well, actually, it came up too. It didn't register. I must not have had it up far enough. Oh, well. Makes me look bad. Um, normally, it would come up as axis 6 for me, and it wouldn't register. Um... But for some reason, it didn't do it. But again, make sure that is, because if it isn't, it, you, you can have problems with that. Why it doesn't do it when I'm recording a video, I don't know. It messed me up earlier to where I had to tab out of the game and make sure I recentered it once again. So, all right, so that is everything that we're going to do so far for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and save my controls. And when I hit save again, it's going to reboot my game and I will join you back in game and we'll show you what we actually did um with some little forestry work okay so uh, i'll join you guys back in just a second all right guys we are back in the game and uh, as you can see we're here at our ponzi scorpion so we're going to go ahead and i'm going to run through everything and show you what we actually did with the joystick so we'll start with uh the front loader arm that we assigned to our right joystick and that is our forward and backwards on that. Forward, backwards. Uh, the next one we assigned our left and right pan. And that's on my left joystick going to the left. And on my left joystick going to the right. After that, we, uh, we worked on the boom. Uh, which is our um, extension. And that is on my left joystick. As I pull back on the joystick, it goes up. As I push forward, it goes down. Uh, then we had the, uh, the what was it, expand or was it close the tool. Um, that was actually the telescoping feature. And again, I'm holding my trigger down and I push my joystick forward. And I pull back. I really like having this on my joystick because I can really be real fine with the controls. I can be real slow with it, uh, you know, to just you know not go really hard forward or really hard back I can be nice and 
and uh, and have a little touch with that. So that's kind of nice. All right, then we had our uh, tool controls. Rotate one direction, rotate the other. And then we had uh, our grapple controls, which won't function on this. We'll have to get in the buffalo for that. Uh, top hat turns it on. And again, I can rotate it around. And we're all good to set. My uh, hat switch on my left controller allows me to turn around and look around. Nice. That's good stuff. And then my hat switch. Excuse me. My hat switch that is on my right controller uh, allows me to actually drive the buffalo. And it's, it's a little touchy. It takes a little getting used to. Um, but I'll get the hang of it. Again, I've only had joysticks running for uh, one day now, so. And uh, like I said, after a while, I'll get used to all the controls and how everything's going to work. All right, so let's go cut a couple of trees down, and we'll uh, we'll jump into our cab, cycle through our different views using our button, and. We'll go ahead and set our cut length real quick so we know what that is. And we'll go over here to a tree, see if we can do a little damage to it. That's the one thing with using that hat trigger, I, I'm not as, uh, not as good as, as I could be. So I'm just going to bring that in a little bit. And I'm going to cut those. And we're just going to do a couple of trees here. You guys have seen people do use joysticks, I'm sure. So you know that what functionalities they have. And again, I can pull that back in. Rotate back in. I can drive forward and uh, find me another victim over here. So, um, yeah, we'll send that out and then I'll work that down just a little bit. Pull it back in. And then I can. Let's get that down lower. Okay, nice. So, just pull this over. Like I said, it takes a little time. I played for a couple hours with it the other night. And I messed around with it a little bit this morning. I by no means have very much time in it. But, um, I think as you... Do you, like with anything, the more you do it, the better you'll get with it. And, uh, should get us a little bit better on that. And again, I got to get used to the getting the biggest thing you get used to is you want to push you want to push forward to make your uh, head unit go out away from you and then you want to push uh, you know vice versa when I want to pull it towards me I want to pull back on the joystick and it just doesn't work that way. Um, so I, you know, I have, uh, that's the only thing you can't change that either. It's uh, just part of the configurations in this thing. And again, my driving's horrible right now. It's a uh, little, little touchy getting used to that, uh, using that, uh, um, What am I trying to say? Using the hat switch to drive with 
takes a little getting used to. You know, Recon has assured me that after you do it enough, you get a... Uh, once you master it, it's pretty easy. So... It becomes second nature to you. Certainly not as fluid as using a gamepad, uh, which, uh, you know, I got used to doing. See, again, I'm thinking I'm pulling it towards me. I was actually pushing it away from me. So, yeah. It's a little decent set of logs here that we got going. And we'll jump over into the buffalo real quick. And, um... And we'll go there. That's where I really can tell a difference in uh, using this is in the buffalo. It makes a world of difference uh, loading in that thing. So we'll just leave this here and uh, we'll tab over to the buffalo. Get it started up. Zoom out just a little bit here. And we'll... Move on over to where we're going to be. Try not to run into my my truck there. Switch my driving seat around. There we go. Now I'm going to change my view, so I'm on my grapple. Alright, so uh, just show you a little bit more about what we did when we set everything up. Um, the functionality of the boom is exactly the same. Just the difference is, is the buttons on my right controller, uh, if I hold down... Uh, I've actually got them reversed. I need to go back and change that. But if I hold down the left button, it opens my grapple. And my right button closes it. And again, if you get those wrong, you can always go back in there and just reverse them. Uh, you'll have to, again, this is one of those things where you'll do a setup and you'll play with it and you'll decide, well, that didn't actually feel comfortable. I might change that and do something else. I've tried like a dozen different ways to drive this thing, like holding down a thumb switch and and using a joystick to move around and at the end of the day it just became the the hat trick trigger has worked best for me and uh so i i've just kind of gotten used to it already and and that's kind of what i'm using so you'll get used to it um but it um like i said it it will all come natural to you and it, it's going to be trial and error if you do decide to do something like this um, how you set up your buttons, where you set things in. Um, it'll all just take a little bit of time for you to get used to and what you use uh, for, you know, which buttons you use, how you set everything up. But yeah, I'm digging this. Uh, I would definitely, if you got the 40, 50 bucks to spend on a couple of joysticks, or if you've already got them, I would definitely recommend this to you it's uh i i uh yeah i don't know how i played the game without it for so long because uh just this little bit of finessing right here i could have never done um with a gamepad it just wouldn't work for me and plus my view would have been all over the place uh if i had done that it would have spun it around so um uh, again i'm just using uh my thumb triggers to uh, to spin the uh, to spin the head around a little bit. So I want to get out here, and get over that one. 
my uh, my depth perception hasn't changed any though for the better yeah uh, but it all gets good but it seems like handling logs it just works so much better this way um, really am pleased with it there's still you know problems with forestry in general um, you know logs spinning like they did right then uh, when I went to put it in um, but just the uh, the control itself is very it just seems like it handles everything a little bit better doing it this way so it seems like I have more more of a touch uh, using this so it's still again it takes uh, getting used to it so anyways I uh, hope this uh, video I hope you found it a little bit informative uh, maybe it uh, showed you a little bit about the process and uh, you know, like I said, I, when I got ready to do it the other night, I thought, well, I'll just go jump it right on into this. It can't be that hard. Uh, I'll watch a video real quick and uh, see what somebody else did. Um, surprise, there was no video out there. So, um, oops, not far enough over. There we go. Um, so I thought, well, I'm no master on this yet, but I did sleep it at... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I... Uh, I'm no master at it yet, but I've done it enough times now that I'm comfortable with it, and I can walk you through the process and and uh, at least give you a little bit of an idea uh, on what you're doing with it. And uh, you know, like I said, uh, maybe it gets you pointed in the right direction, and uh, you might take a stab at it yourself. Maybe you've got a joystick laying around and you uh, and you want to use it. Um, this is what's cool to me. I could never get this this right here I could never do completely right before and uh, it seems like it's so much easier because I've got that gentle touch pulling that boom back in um, and I can push those logs up into the into the trailer a little bit I did that earlier I was like Oh, that was so much easier. So yeah, can you tell I like this? It was definitely worth the uh, the forty bucks to buy two joysticks. And you know what I did? I got the refurbished models. I'm not gonna lie. I, you know, I'm probably not gonna use joysticks for anything other than this game. So why spend the money on like brand new things? Um, so I, you know, I just bought the refurbished stuff off of Amazon, and uh, so I didn't pay as much. And uh, they came packaged wonderfully, um, looked just like they were brand new. So uh, I couldn't tell the difference in the refurbished stuff and what would have been new. So um, pretty happy with it. And uh, probably going to start doing some more forestry work in the game. Uh, which some folks have been interested in seeing some forestry work. And uh, it's something that I really have steered away from because I couldn't stand it. But I think this will make it a bit more fun. And uh, I know Recon is dying for a forestry partner. So he and I will probably do a little bit of forestry work together in the uh, coming days at least until I get burned out on it until I have a whole bunch of logs start getting jittery and falling all over the place on me and you know acting stupid then I'll be like eh I'm done with it joysticks for sale <laughs> just kidding all right guys so uh, this is gonna wrap this video up I could sit here and load logs all day long but I just wanted to go over the basics with you and just show you kind of what we did I probably should have had a camera set up and 
so you can see my hands and all that other stuff moving but it's uh, not something I thought about doing but um, anyways uh, if you have any comments on the video make sure you leave them below if you like the video make sure you give me a like uh, I do appreciate that it lets me know that uh, at least you guys appreciate the uh, the effort I'm putting into the videos uh, if there's something you guys want to see of course leave a comment for me and we'll uh, we'll see if we can get that done for you and of course if you're new to the channel and uh, you're just watching us for the first or second time and you haven't yet already make sure you subscribe to the channel I do new a new video each and every day mostly gameplay but every once in a while I do tackle uh, something silly like this and uh, oh I got lucky there didn't I Had that fell right where it needed to go so anyways uh, yeah I don't always do videos like this but uh, every once in a while when I find something where I feel like I can help educate some people I will do those and uh, but mostly it's just gameplay so anyways thanks for watching guys hope you have a great and wonderful day and I will see you next time bye bye